Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Preparation Ape, your number one place for Corey in the house. <laughs> that felt way worse than I thought it would. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. <laughs> it was bad. Uh, I'm DKP. I'm Mage Tom. And of course, we're coming at you live here from twitch.tv slash chainsight every single Thursday night at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. Yes. Hip hip hooray. Yes, indeed. What up, Pat? What up, baby? So, Mage Tom, what do we have on the Residox tonight? <clears throat> we're going to be talking about a Metroid Netflix TV series. Mm -hmm. Is it going to happen? Is it possible? Will it be a thing? Or in the case, is it just like a catchy tagline to get people excited for something that will probably not exist. I'm um, confused by that already. All right, well, so I, I can't I'll, wait. To... I will unconfuse things very soon. <laughs> um, <clears throat> like if it doesn't exist, then what are we getting excited for? I guess you'll have to. I know that's. I guess you'll have to seats. tune in to find out. Um, Castlevania did not suck. <clears throat> nope. So I want to talk about the idea that they should just say fuck these TV movies. Uh, these TV, I mean, I'm sorry, movie adaptations for video games, mm. and start focusing on TV show adaptations. Or, video game adaptations on TV. What's going on, Nick Canada? What up, girl? Uh, we're going to talk about esports. Esports is not a thing that we talk about, but we're going to talk about it, and we're going to talk about the potential future that it could have, and if it could grow. Um, we're going to talk about achievements. That's another thing we've never talked about. Getting right. achievements, trophies, or accomplishments, or whatever. Uh, and then finally, I have this theory that there will not be an N64 classic, so I'm going to go into detail about that. All right. That's it. All right. Well, uh, should we go ahead and move on? Let's go. All right. <clears throat> so first off, Metroid, a Netflix original. All right. Pray <clears throat> tell. Let's hear. So um, I've got this pulled up from Destruct Destructoid.com, written by Nick Valdez. What up, Adafi? All right. Nick Valdez. They fucking would hire someone named Nick Valdez. Thank you. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it's called Metroidvania, all up in your TV. All right. Quote, now that the Castlevania series has premiered on Netflix and everyone who's interested has gotten their peepers on it, it's time to move forward to the next shiny thing. Showrunner uh, A.D. Shankar, uh, fresh off the announcement he was working on an Assassin's Creed animated assassination, said he's also interested in making a Metroid series. In an interview with Nintendo Life, Shankar said he'd want to tackle a dark Metroid series in the same anime style. Since Metroid seems like a very anime-friendly series, I'd be down for it. If it were to take a risk and not have a lot of dialogue, a la Samurai Jack, that'd be absolutely perfect. As for the currently in the works Castlevania Season 2, Shankar confirms that the scripts for the eight episodes have already been written. So hey, that's a good An sign. additional eight episodes? Yeah. Nice. So yeah. Uh, the guy who brought Castlevania, I would say successfully, to Netflix wants to do it with Metroid. Uh, Idafi says Nintendo will never let that happen. Next topic. Um, yeah, I was about to. <laughs> that's, that's kind of well, that's, well, that's that's the question: Is would Nintendo allow that? No, I think that they could. I don't know if they'd let it be dark. I don't know Which... if it would be that great if it's not dark. But <clears throat> no, like it. You know, there were rumors for a while that they were working on a Legend of Zelda TV series. And Netflix, I mean, I'm sorry, Nintendo has been all about expanding their brand lately with things like the Universal Studios, and they allowed Bowser to be in Wreck-It Ralph. Like, there are, you know, there are things that they are doing uh, to get their brand out there more. So, uh, you know, anything is possible. Gax into the Gecko and Netflix original. Damn, your boy yeah, would yeah. definitely watch that. You want those dated-ass 90s references? Yeah. That's where to go, baby. Can we see some Bubsy as well? So, uh... Do we have another topic on here just about TV or video game movies? Yeah, uh, it's gonna... Or does it roll into this one? Well, this one will roll into that one. Okay, so save it about the movies next. Alright. Not necessarily <laughs> movies, but yeah. Okay. So... Yeah, that uh, seems like too good an idea for Nintendo. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <clears throat> I think that... Okay, here, here's what I would predict. If they were to do it, yeah, we, we know that it being dark, bloody, is off the table. For sure. Now, so just knowing that, like, that's just a given, right? So you still yeah. have to regify it. Reggie's Law still has to commence. Uh, as is tradition, I as think tradition. that we would be more likely to get a Samus made out of yarn TV series <laughs> than we would a bloody 
Like, as the, as, it as, as the game implies, not bloody, but like gritty, dark, uh, you know, depressing atmosphere. Which I like, think that they could, I think that they could do it in uh, the tone of the games and it still be appropriate where Nintendo is not like, Ugh. it more fit in the vein of like, I don't know what uh, Metroid's rated. Is it T? Uh, it's E, I'm pretty sure. I, so I still, still think they could do an E version of it. They don't have to make it super dark and gritty, even though that's what uh, Shankar says he wants. Um, I still think that there's a way that they could pull it Dude, off. Dude, okay, if, if they use his current stuff, right, and Netflix, okay, so, so he ships that to Nintendo, and they look at the current Castlevania, there's no way they're going to get to it. That's like, it, it, we were promised a rated R Castlevania, and that's what we got. Yeah. And, and more so than I thought. And there's no way Nintendo's going to enjoy the direction that just that went, period. Because it's like, well, this is a, we don't think video games should be that way. And it's like, okay, well, fair enough. I mean, it's your, that's yeah. your, your stance on it. It's your IP. But yeah, I, I, if it does happen, which is unlikely, For sure. I do not see this guy getting which is a fucking disappointment. Yeah, for sure. Because uh, the guy did a great job with Castlevania. I agree. That's not perfect. It could have almost been perfect had they... This is something I didn't really think about till afterwards, but uh, they used none of the soundtrack for the game. None of the iconic what songs. If, what if, that, like, that honestly would have put like the bow on the package to make it feel like Castlevania. What if Season 2 opens and it's... Do 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 do. That'd be amazing. Like you should have had Vampire Killer playing when he was slaying those demons the first time with the Vampire Killer. Whip. Yeah, Silent but, Hill uh, T- uh, TV show would work well. Uh, let's go ahead and roll on to the next topic because that fits nicely into what we're going to talk about. Yeah, fuck movies. Let's go with TV. Hmm? Like stop. And the, what you were talking about earlier, and what uh, Darth Axe is talking about, is exactly what this topic is. It is this idea of saying, like, let's stop trying to make these, like, you know, $50 million budget films that are high risk and, you know, don't turn out worth the shit. And let's focus on doing TV show adaptations, Mm -hmm. which you can have, like, lower stakes, but still, you know, focus in the right areas like cinematography and writing and, you know, (sighs) depending on if it's animation or not, like art style and things like that. You can do certain things to make it work well within the budget of a television show. And especially with somebody like Netflix who makes, you know, well, I mean, as long a as billion sci- dollars as long a as month. Sci-Fi Channel doesn't have it. Like, first and foremost, yeah, don't, don't let, let, don't don't let, let Sci-Fi have anything. Well, don't let it be on network TV. Yes, I agree with even that. Even if it doesn't, even if, like, it could hypothetically play without breaking any rules, like, don't have it on there anyways. The only channels that I would be okay with, FX, HBO, right. Netflix. So it's one network, network television channel. All right, that I, I can get behind FX. FX is great; they really are. But don't uh, don't you also, dare put something on TNT. Also, Amazon. Yeah, we Amazon. Amazon, do it. Amazon, possibly Hulu. Uh, to me, Hulu has like an identity issue. Like the, all of their yeah. original content is just kind of like it's not bad. I know that people like I'll, I thought eleven twenty two sixty three was all right. The path is okay. Um, a lot of people really like The Handmaid's Tale or Handmaiden's Tale. Um, that's kind of whatever to me, but like, I don't know, they kind of have an identity issue, in my opinion. Which Amazon does to a, to a certain extent, but Amazon is willing to go a little harder um, right. than I think Hulu is. So, uh, but Netflix, man, they, they just like, they'll do anything. Pretty much. So well, we've seen that, which like, because if you look, back in the day it was like when you saw something which was like Netflix originally, you'd be like, ooh, I gotta give this a little bit extra attention. Yeah. Now it's like, Jesus fucking Christ, like, what won't you fund? Oh, yeah. But that has paid off a little bit. You know, as much as like as much as the the, the, the For, influence of shit that we've got, yeah. we did get Castlevania. Absolutely. Which like I don't who who the fuck else is gonna fund? Apparently nobody. Um so with that being said, what what games would you like to be, see be adapted? Because they could do anything. Because <clears throat> they adapted like Skylanders, and I've watched that a few times with the kiddo, and like it's not bad. It works. It, like, tonally works with Skylanders and things like that. So they could do something as simplistic or small or even as child-friendly as Skylanders, and they could do something as hard as Castlevania. So they could go anywhere. They could go anywhere in between. Right. So realistically, there is not a game genre or a game uh, series or IP that they couldn't touch and be able to make it work. Uh, I would like to see a live-action Shaq-Fu. Okay. First and foremost. Does it star Shaq? 
Of course. But he's like 75 right now. I don't care. <laughs> they, they can Benjamin Button him. Shaq, make, make it take place in current day. Make him play himself. Okay. Just, just redo the plot of Karate Kid, but put Shaq there. Okay. Now wax, wax on, wax off. Wax Is that on, your Shaq impression? Wax off. Yeah, that's a good one, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> All right, secondly, and, and this is fucking heartbreaking, because I know it won't happen. Uh, Resident Evil. Oh, dude, a good Resident Evil would be so good. Well, do it like with a, do you it. can go ahead and count it out, but yeah. go on. Focusing specifically on, like, cover the first three games through three seasons. Like, make that the focus. Dude, okay. Imagine, if you will, for a second. Because this one I think would fit probably the easiest, which is uh, Nemesis being set in a city, like one survivor, along with a couple other people she meets every now and again. Yep. Going through Decently surviving, small cast. being chased by a nemesis. Like, for, even if it's like 30 minutes an episode or an hour, let's say an hour an episode, six episodes you could e easily have it done. Yeah. And have like everything in there that you would want. For sure. Uh, so yeah, but this might be news to some people, might not be to others, but uh, some terrible fucking news was, was, was given recently regarding Resident Evil. Despite the fact that you know, they were praised for bringing it back to horror roots, so to speak, for their video game. RE7, right? Yeah. Uh, who's the jerk-off that did the last movie Paul series? Paul S. Anderson. Right? Or Paul Anderson? No, fuck that guy. I'm a... It's all about that Wes Anderson. <laughs> hey, fuck you. Uh, but anyways, look, so he's done with the series, right? Paul W.S. Wander. Yeah. Anderson. They're, they're giving it instead to, like... Ah, the guy that does the Insidious movie. Insidious, uh, all those. Which, you know, those movies are actually pretty good for modern horror. Never which, seen like, them. Modern horror basically sucks. It's... Anyways, not to go into that. But, like, these ones are pretty passable. Yeah. I haven't walked out out of one, like, uh, Insidious or Conjuring or whatever, <laughs> say, saying, like, that fucking sucks. I haven't walked out of it. Yeah, like... Yeah. And they're giving it to him. However, his reaction to getting it was... All right, you thought it had action before. What I think it needs, we got to double down on the action elements. It's got to be all action. Yeah. And it's like, all right, well, there goes our fucking chance. It's kind of like when you get a re-release or a remake of a game, and it sucks, or Nintendo ever tries something out, and it doesn't sell well because they fuck it up. And you're like, well, that was the one we're going to get this fucking decade. Better luck next time. And it's like, that sucks fucking ass so goddamn much. For sure. And, yeah, so you can count Resident Evil out because of that. Um, so Idify says Zelda, Mega Man, Undertale, <laughs> Peb mentions. Let's talk about those three. Undertale, first and foremost. I, Undertale, uh, the, I think all three of them could work, but they would have to be done correctly. And to well, be yeah, honest, all like, three what of them. What does that mean, though? All three of them need to be animated. Oh, of course. Like a live action could Zelda. You, could you imagine yeah. a live action Mega Man? Oh, How no, fucking terrible. terrible that be. Oh, I can imagine it. I can imagine it in the vision of like sci fi. With, like, this really shitty-looking CG where his arm, like, Looks becomes like the Mega Buster. League. Yeah. And he's just got, like, his helmet is overly large, where they just, like, make it way too big for the character. Oh, God, that'd be so <clears throat> awful. Uh, uh, but, like, a cartoon... Uh, granted, we've, we've had Mega Man cartoons in the past. I thought the, uh, the NT Warrior, like, I like the uh, Battle Network series. I know most Mega Man fans, it's not their favorite Mega Man series, which is fair. Um, but they did an anime series based on that that I thought was pretty good. Um, Zelda, Zelda, I think has to be a a cartoon. Like, yeah, definitely. It, and Link has, in I mean, my opinion, has to talk, has to have a personality, has to have this like fun playfulness to him. Look, as long as that's separate from the games, fine. Yeah, like I don't, I want Link to be a voiceless protagonist in the games. However, if it was going to be a movie, yeah, you can't have a voiceless protagonist in a in a in a series like that. Unless, like, it's written to the plot that he's fucking mute, you know? Yeah. Which, as far as I know, Link is not. Undertale. What do you think about Undertale? Like, what If they you... gave it to the dudes who did Adventure Time, which oh, I, have, I have not watched. That would be so too, good. I have not watched too much of Adventure Time. But Adventure like, Time is great. I, 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 I The art style looks similar. Yeah. Like, as far the as, The whole like, concept is similar. Like, yeah. they do dark really well. Like, <clears throat> to go into, like, really dark themes and stuff like that, but it still fits in the Adventure Time kind of... Uh, headspace. I think that would work really, really well. Mm -hmm. Dudes would sex it right. Yeah, they would. yeah. Bench time version Undertale. Yeah. Uh, In my mind, what I was thinking was like a Miyazaki thing, but I like your idea better. 
The guy that did like Princess Mononoke. Okay, yeah, that's what it should. My neighbor Totoro, all that kind right, of right. stuff. Right, right, right. But <clears throat> it wouldn't be anime. It would. I mean, it, well, I guess the it thing could be is, anime. like, this is a rare instance where you take a game like that and you're like, well, you know, you'd have to let the Japanese do it because it's a Jap. Oh wait, this one's made by an American guy, so it's like, yeah. No, it doesn't necessarily have to have that Japanese flair to work as For far sure. as like their their style of storytelling or you know whatever it is. Yeah. Um, so yeah, really, I mean, I, I I'd say either one's fine. For sure. Uh, but yeah, uh, we got Indigo Prophecy. <laughs> Never played David that. Cage games. Oh, Kage. Uh, yeah, David. I think th- th- those could be decent. Uh, I don't know. It would be hard to do for Indigo Prophecy because it has to be live action, right? It would look yeah. really weird, kind of animated, and it would be hard to do without making it corny as fuck. Which I love the game. Don't well, you could, wrong. you could, you could get, um, but it jumps the shark probably higher than almost any game in the world. Uh, what's and that would be who's the guy that sell. did Twin Peaks? David Lynch? Yeah, get David Lynch to do it. I think he'd do better at Heavy Rain, honestly. Either or. Oh, yeah. Heavy Rain <clears> was mentioned. Dude, fucking... Man, that, that would be great. Yeah. Actually, yeah. <clears throat> um, I think that could work really well. Let's see, what else we got here? Um, what do you think about Metal Gear? <laughs> Festus is here, and Festus and well, DKP are both, off, like, shaking their heads <clears throat> no and tan. First off, they're, they're already making a movie of that. Uh, it's like in production, like right now. Secondly, like the pro- the, the problem is this: uh, one, it's a movie, which is, it's a problem in itself, but that's separate from the the conversation we're having here, right? Uh, well, no, it's kind of not because if it, if it's fuck movies, let's go with TV. Yeah, fuck movies. In, in order to TV. tell a a the, the full breadth of that story, like you would need to have more than a fucking what two and a half hour max runtime. Absolutely, right. I mean, you would probably want, like, one season per game. It, well, yeah, that's how I feel. One I mean, season per game. It could be six game. episodes, it could be ten episodes, just yeah. depending on what happens. I love the idea, uh, what's but, the base that part one takes place in? Uh, Shadow, Shadow Moses. Moses. I would love an entire season of a show to take place yeah, in Shadow Moses. Yeah, would be fucking great. <clears throat> I love the idea of, like, him, like, staying hidden a good portion of it. You know, you think about those, like, um, I'm probably not going to have good examples, but something like Die Hard. Where, like, he spends a good portion of the movie, like, in hiding and vents and things like that, like, picking up pieces of information. Like, something like that, where he is, uh, like, gathering intel and, like, sneaking around. Like, it could work in context with him with the codec. I mean, the dialogue and the script would have to be fucking impeccable. Like, they would have to be exceptionally well, well done. Well, here's the thing. It depends on what way you want to take it. If you did it live action, yes. If you do it animated, like an anime or something. I think it needs to be live You could just action. basically keep it as is. No, I that okay. That's the thing. Like, that's no, granted, the, this is me not having. I know that it goes into some really crazy places. So yeah, I mean, that's not the problem with the live action thing. Honestly, what the problem is is casting, casting and budget, and it's like, see, but what kind of budget do you need to take place an entire series to take place in Shadow Moses? If you didn't want it to look, if you didn't want it to look cheap in like CG everywhere, like yeah, but it's streams, just like it's like a guy yeah, with revolvers and it's a tank. It's just like the, the only like CG. You played half the game. Right? There's there's bigger elements to it. No, I know that there is an actual Metal Gear. The what? I mean, as long as they're not doing the Twin Snakes one. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, okay, who would you cast for Solid Snake or Big Boss? Like, right? Dude, if we start pulling in the who would you cast? No, if we start no, pulling the who would you cast? Really? Because like the the people that could have no done names. it. No names. The people that could have no done names. it are are basically yeah dead or too old. No names. Like. A younger Clint Eastwood like would have been characters. fine. Uh, literally, Kurt Russell would have been brilliant. And Hugh Jackman. Uh, yeah, those like, are all big names. No names. Put a bunch of, like, it's, it's people just, that you don't know who they are. are. Look, the, the reason why uh, I, you need it to be animated, in my opinion, for it to look good is, like, you can, you can allow yourself to be a lot cornier when it's animated. You know what I mean? Uh, a lot more pulpy, a lot more, like... Just you know, over the top as far yeah. as, and that kind of requires that. Like you're 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 taking you're either gonna if you if you do it live action you're either gonna have to change everything entirely as far as visually, or it's gonna look like the Dragon Ball Z movie. Like imagine having like a legit dude in like a padded suit with a bandana on looking like a fucking jerk off. Doesn't work in real life. I've seen Festus <clears throat> do it a lot. He wears that fucking bandana. Looks have like you, a jerk off. Have you guys watched The Americans before? Uh, but the like, TV show The Americans. No. Well, but like you can I'll do that in an animated version. If you guys watch the Americans, completely. watch the Americans. That's the tone that I would like to see a live action MGS take. 
Um, Idify says, okay, clearly I need to pitch this to you. Arms, MTV, real world. How do they eat? How do they have sex? Well, they Can people with stupid arms maintain a relationship? That actually sounds awesome. Like, it's silly and over the top. You can pitch it, but it's, it's no, Nintendo we're talking about, man. I, I, we're, this is the dream world. Okay, this we're is in dream a dream world. world. All right, then I want a fucking series of Silent Hill as well, and I want it. Yeah, that was mentioned earlier. <sighs> I don't know who the fuck would do it. But shut the fuck up. No, they're not. This movie <laughs> suck. Fucking no, ass. that movie is so good. Yeah, we're not going to get into that argument because it's fuck movies. Let's go with TV. But <clears throat> um, I, yeah, I totally think that would work. Look, I also would really like a uh, Splatoon Nickelodeon cartoon. We're talking network TV on that one, though. Is that, is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, over the top, silly, something I can watch with the kid. All right, all right. And like, and they they you're you know like a uh, Yu Gi Oh or Pokemon or like um um. Dra even Dragon Ball Z, when they do the like the big world tournaments, mm. where like everybody, like the whole world is in love with this thing, they do that with Splatoon. Like the world is obsessed with, you know, like uh, turf war or whatever. Right. I think that'd be badass. Right. I could also see Jet Grind Radio being a cool. Oh, uh, that would be really anime fun. sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, I think Shinmu animated would be good. I feel like now, granted, never played Shinmu, but I feel like that would work well as a live action. Because it's like a, it's a revenge tale, right? Yeah, it is, but like you would have to sit in like 80s Japan, and that's going to cost a lot of money. That sounds sick. Yeah, I, that I sounds would watch sick it. as fuck. I would watch it. Yes, be happy a lot. To see Dude, it. live action, 80s Japan. Oh man, that sounds so good. And lastly, an animated, because I fucking do not. Okay, you know what? No, no, fuck this. Live action by HBO after Game of Thrones wraps up, wrap it into The Witcher. Okay. I'll allow it. Yeah. Because basically, like, if you, I just see, if you squint I just your, picture Idify going. If you squint your eyes a little bit while you're watching, like, Westeros and Game of Thrones, you can be like, is the Witcher kind of yeah. necessary? Yeah, no, like, give it the Game of Thrones budget, give it the Game of Thrones whole thing. I don't know who would cast Fucking Griffins role, and shit. But, as a, as a, I'm sorry, Gerald from Riverside. Uh, I like I like fucking uh, the Alan Wake. Alan Wake by the guy who created X-Files, yeah. Or X-Files director would do Silent Hill. Yeah. I think The Witcher's already going to be a show. I mean, to be honest, a lot of this stuff gets talked about. Yep. We'll just see. Time will see. tell. Anything else I can think of before we... Yeah, look around. Look at them games. Tenchu. I, I'm watching, Tenchu I'm would watching, have to be I'm an anime. Onimusha. Yeah. Onimusha would be cool, too. Also and... an anime. An Onimusha you know, anime. You know, you know what I think would actually be pretty cool? What? Like the story of Grand Theft Auto V, live action. Oh, that'd be dope. Like, a, like yeah. Uh, that what, would be a fun series to watch. It really would. Give it to Vince Gilligan. Dude, that'd be so that. good. Vince Gilligan's Grand Theft Auto. Damn. Damn. All right. And, oh. all right, last one I got. Here. Getting wet. What? Last one I got. Here. Okay. It'll be the third attempt. But, you know, they say three times a charm. A series, a Hitman series, that's not, okay. I, I don't know how to, <laughs> don't even, anything to do, let's just forget the other ones. For some reason, I like can't, I can't not picture them. Yeah, they, no, that's the, that's the tough part, isn't it? Yeah. I love Timothy Oliphant, but I'm Oh, like, you know what, I do have one more, uh, 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 Battletoads. Are you serious? Fucking absolutely serious. Who would? Nah, shut no, up. fuck <laughs> that. <animation. laughs> Actually, Michael no, do it. no. I just Michael let them let them put on the old Ninja Turtles costumes <laughs> and just do it like that. Fuck it. It doesn't have to look good. They just like, don't wear the shells. They wear yeah. the costumes without the shells. Precisely. Uh, Super Mario Brothers softcore porn on HBO. My guess is a hardcore porn already exists with the Mario Brothers. Mario's Probably genitals on fire. <laughs> hey. Remember that old gym? What about Max Payne? Oh, man. HBO what Max fuck? Payne. How did I not think of that? I don't know. Well, when you said Man on Fire, I was like, oh, Max Payne. Dude, I have one correct. Who's that? Ridley Scott's brother. Festus wants Ridley Scott's brother to direct Max Payne. Is it Ridley Scott's brother? Ridley Scott? The guy, maybe not Ridley Scott. He's guy. like, is it Ridley Scott's Ridley, brother? Uh, I don't know. Who the fuck are you talking about? All right, we'll that, get back to fire. us. The guy who but, directed Man on Fire is who he wants to direct. Okay. Uh, whatever he just said. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Oh, you know what? Silent Hill, give it to Guillermo del Toro. Dang, I'd be dope with that too. Yep. Tony Scott. Tony Scott. Or this guy's brother's dead. Scott's yeah, that's what he yeah. said. He said he's a dead guy. We just can't hear him. That old game, Another World, it was amazing. 
Yeah, uh, Out of This World is what it was called in the U.S. Ah. Until they um, they did a re-release of it like a few years ago, a 20th anniversary release, and they just call it Another World 20th Anniversary. Huh. All right. Because that's what the real name of it is. Sure. It would be like re-releasing Final Fantasy III and appropriately calling it Final Fantasy VI. Here in the U.S. Because they <clears throat> altered the name. Um, anything else? Yeah, one more thing. So, as far as just the whole idea of fuck movies, let's go with TV. Yeah. Uh, especially when it comes to the, the subject matter uh, of video games, right? Uh, that's even your average experience with a, with a game, right? And it'll be somehow story-based, right? Is way more than an hour and a half runtime. In order for you to fully flesh out, and like, if you if you do, if your intent as the creator of this is to realize what made that game great to begin with, you're gonna need probably more than an hour and a half runtime, and that's where the whole long, you know, long you know, long form format of television can work a lot better. Absolutely. Like, I think that's one of the biggest problems with video game movies. Well, there's a lot of problems with video game movies, but <clears throat> um, characters need a lot more development than they're being provided in a lot of these games. So. Uh, I'd find this a Zork TV show. Maybe finally someone will watch it or be interested in I it. I fucking watch it. Have it? You get Michael Where McKean to play that lamp or whatever he was. He can reprise that role pretty easy, I think. Man. Also, uh, also Uncharted. That's that's it. That's it. That's it. No more talking about it. I'd be down with Uncharted. I don't want The Last of Us though. Like, leave The Last of Us alone. That's how I feel about Metal Gear. Just that's fair. Let it die. <laughs> But specifically with something like The Last of Us, is like, don't do anything that has zombies in it. Or any type of thing that's like a zombie. Because, I'm, I'm, you know, that shit's a little overplayed right now. Right. All right, we're ready to move on? Uh, but, uh, anybody else have any other suggestions before we move on? I know we're kind of running a little long in the tooth on this, but... This I can is see Netflix topic, doing so. a Skyrim show. Do you know that Game of Thrones? At, we love Dragon's the, Crow. The problem is, Skyrim as a story is incredibly Ooh. fucking bland. It'll be announced next like, It would be cheap, E3. because it could just use all the same sets. It'd just be like, hey, this dickhead's wearing a horned, you know, crown or whatever. Boom. There's your Skyrim. Yep. But, I'm telling you, we need a Witcher before then. Oh, also, I'd rather have Witcher over Skyrim. Mm. Even though Skyrim is, has way larger of a mass appeal. Also, uh, maybe, a, maybe Doom without Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Or Wolfenstein. <laughs> Dang. But, Mm. He's doing that Rampage movie. Mm. Wait, uh, who? Dwayne Johnson. So he's is. doing Jumanji and Rampage? Yeah. You know, fuck both of them. Halo. Up. I want to go to space. Man, I loved when Neil Bloom or Blomkamp was doing Halo. Uh, who the fuck is Renee Zellweger? Neil Blomkamp. Kingdom uh-huh. fucking hearts. Yeah, good luck fucking buying that from Disney. <clears> They're <throat> getting the license for all that shit. The only way but, I would buy, even slightly buy into it is if it was, of course, animated. Yeah. I think Halo could be cool. Right. Right. Zell Wedger, the game, the movie. Well, we gotta move on. So we're Let's do it. 30 minutes in. <laughs> Alright, so, yeah, this is one we I don't really think we've talked about before. We've e-sports. never talked about esports at all, but this is the first time I'm like, man, we should talk about esports. Alright, I'm gonna read an article. This is from TechCrunch.com. Uh, let me scroll up to the top to get the writer. Fitz Tepper. What the fuck? They would hire somebody named Fitz fucking Tepper. Title of it is, Overwatch is getting a city-based esports league with Robert Kraft as an owner. Quote, esports is growing up. Blizzard just announced the Overwatch League, a new esports league built around Overwatch, which will be the first major esports league with a traditional city-based team structure, just like professional sports leagues. Seven teams are announced today. Boston, New York, LA, Miami, uh... Miami slash Orlando, dash Orlando, San Francisco, Shanghai, and Seoul. The first season will start before the end of the year, and it's possible more teams will be added before then. Uh, so far, almost all of the teams are owned by the leaders in the traditional sports and esports world. From old school sports world, Robert Kraft, who's the CEO and owner of the New England Patriots, they'll own the Boston team. Jeff Wilpin, the COO of the New York Mets, will own the New York team. From the esports world, Noah Winston, the CEO of Immortals, will run the LA team, and Andy Miller of NRG Sports will own the San Francisco team. Now, there's a whole bunch more to this. If you guys want to read it, it's on TechCrutch.com. The whole idea, the whole thing that I want to get to discuss here is the idea that, like, this to me is the first step in the possibility that esports could be taken seriously. What do you mean taken seriously? It is already. It's just not recognized by, like, 
The amount of money that's put into it, it's already taken very fucking seriously. What, I don't mean take it like seriously. I mean publicity from the regular general public. Yeah, maybe I mean on a on a larger scale. I mean um, touching the general audience of the world. Uh, who who is it that uh, makes fun of Twitch? There's like a talk show host that makes Jimmy Kimmel, right? Where uh, he talks about like who would want to sit there more, and watch yeah. people play video games. Um, him and like the people that would be entertained or laughed by that. See this idea of what video games were and not what they are or what they're becoming and may not take esports seriously. Like as a legitimate, have a legitimate, you know, future in terms of uh, a yeah. scale. Like marketing deals and things like that. Like I want to see a Tasmanian devil shirt that has an esports team jersey on. You know what I'm saying? Wait, so you'd be low, tr you'd be low class enough to have, you'd be the Tweety Bird team? <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, <laughs> That's the joke. But the general idea is, is like, uh, one of the things, so, uh, great example, uh, Festus here is a Houston Texans fan, fan of the Houston Texans football team. Festus is from Houston, Texas. So, him being a Houston, Texas fan has something to do with the fact that he lives in Houston. Not, that's not the only reason. There are a lot of other motivators. But people have an attachment to the teams that represent the towns or cities that they live in. My wife went to high school football games. My wife doesn't care about high school football. There is like a certain level of like pride that people have in the teams surrounding their areas. So I think with something like esports, this is the first opportunity when you say, like, let's say Austin, Texas is going against Houston, Texas in an Overwatch match. That would give, like, us, you and I, a reason to, like, bitch talk Festus. So there is an attachment that people have to locations that has never existed in esports before. And I feel like this is the first big, like, jump in the right direction to make esports more of a legitimate business in terms of, like, growing the brand and making it something bigger. All right. <clears throat> First off, what's up, Zod? He says, uh, wasn't Dota on ESPN? It was, also, yes. by the way, these Absolutely. guys are Dota. Uh, by the way, yeah, good luck yeah, on that shit. It was on barbecue. ESPN, the Ocho. I'm the fuck the Ocho? Oh. Yeah. Come on. Subscribe to the Ocho Reddit. It's very funny. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. So, I don't think... All right, well, this, this, is, this is just my opinion. And, yeah. like, I'm not even going to say it's, like, a it's a good idea, it's a decent... Or, what you know, how I feel about this is, is, is correct. So, it's probably not. But the last thing that I, I really want from video games as a whole is to homogenize itself and do it the way that something completely different, uh, you know, do it how sports teams do it. But I don't think the answer to like, hey, let's, let's, let's try to do something with this, is to just copy the format of something completely different and try to make it the same. Like, I, I, that doesn't really jive with me too much. In fact, I think that kind of segregating and making it to where it is like a, a team mentality between cities kind of damages the whole idea of, of, of video games in general which is like, you know, you're playing with some, but there's the competitive nature to it, right? But, for example, uh, you know, I, I would happen to be over while Zod and Tasty were watching the Dota World Championships or whatever, and they might have been uh, you know, rooting for Korean, uh, the Korean team to win just because they're yeah. that good. Uh, when it comes down to like, okay, well we need to for whatever reason divide it into geographic locations and like, oh, this is, we're going to try to build up this sort of fuck you rivalry. I don't know, it, it just that seems fucking lame. Also, this picture right here <laughs> is the same sort of shit that I, I cannot fucking stand. It's like, alright, look, you're playing a video game. And I know that these, and I know the people that are taking these photos, right, aren't the ones who, they're, they're probably told to do this, but like, you don't need to look like you're about to take my fucking wallet. You know, when, when, you're, when you just sit there with a mouse and fucking keyboard. So the like, person what you're doing... Corey into house pose. That was ingested. You know it, motherfucker. <laughs> right? It's the same sort of uh, all-the-time bullshit you see where it's like in the Discovery Channel where it's a bunch of fat fucking people that run a pawn shop and they're like, next time on butt fucking pawn and they all turn around like they're badass. Yeah. I can't... I, 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 that, that makes me want to fucking vomit. It's like, come on. And... I don't know, man. It's I, I just don't think that like treating this in the same way that the current sports industry works and trying to copy that model is necessarily the best move for this. And the other thing that I that I'm worried about <clears throat> is the push for esports in general, because and we've seen this all throughout fucking E3, right? 
the more of a of a sort of new niche thing, and it's like, okay, well, this is where all the money really is made, right? Which is by tournaments and people tuning in and advertising and sponsorships and all that shit, right? Yeah. Uh, every fucking game is going to want to have an esports component at least for a while. Like it's gonna it's gonna over it, it, the markets. It's not even anywhere near what we're talking about getting it to. For sure. And it's already oversaturated as fuck. For sure. And I don't know if I, you can sleep all you want, but wait until fucking next Witcher uh, is in lieu of a you know card based fucking Gwent esports game. Then you might fucking wake up for that, you little bitch. So yeah, that's that's my opinion. Esports are cool, but uh, this picture's just pissing me off when I look at it. <laughs> but yeah, I don't like the idea of like. Because how lame would you fucking feel? Really, would you shit talk fastest and be like, yo, our, our yes. boys in Overwatch is going to beat your boys just, in Overwatch? Let me just say this. Let me just say Give this. Me a fucking break. At E3, they had the Splatoon Invitational. Mm. And we watched, like, probably two hours of it. He watched the whole thing. We were rooting for the U.S. team. I hate it. And similar to, like, the Olympics, we root for the U.S. team. Regardless, like... Because we happen to be from the United States of America. It is... R- r- <clears throat> this is not necessarily a question. Like, your opinion is absolutely appreciated. And yeah. it is like, I know that I'm probably And an important here. perspective. And my opinion actually doesn't differ from yours. But the idea of esports becoming something that regular... Like, Festus, you may have played Splatoon like two or three times, if at all. We, I wouldn't consider you a Splatoon fan, but we watched the, the the full two hours of it because, and I think a lot of people can appreciate this, at least if you have watched the, like uh, Evo or something like that, that there are certain types of people or teams or whatever that you root for. And even um, Evo has things where it's like showing this kid and he's like, oh yeah, my family's house just got foreclosed on and, you know, all I've had is... <clears throat> all I've had is Street Living Fighter like that Five. And cheese and Street <laughs> Fighter. <laughs> yeah. So all I have is Street Fighter Five, and you know my parents have just supported me and been behind me the whole time. And the then you see him shits. play it. You see him fight, and then he wins, and then everybody loses their shit because they're like, "I know this kid's story." There's a certain level of like we like to be connected. We like to human beings like to have a connection to things, any type of things, and even things that we are not interested in. We can have, if we can find some form of way to be connected to them, it can create more interest in us. So by having a team that we can root for, uh, because they are in a location, or because they are, I don't know why, but owned by a particular person, or whatever. It's the same sort of thing we have with, like what you guys were just talking about with movies. Where it's like, it really matters who plays these characters in Metal Gear. Because names mean something. And places are names. It is a name that has a meaning to you as an individual. Mm. So the idea that they can take names and, or specifically places, and attach teams to them, I think that that is, this, like, like I said, this is, put, this is big to me. This to me is like, is it, is <clears throat> it, it is the is best thing news. that's ever happened? But yes, to me, this is like potentially something that uh, will put, Basically, I think we'll get to a point like uh, uh, I'm a nerd posted or Zod posted about how uh, Dota, I think he said, we'll get was on ESPN. Minute, by the way. Yeah, apologies, guys. Uh, Dota was on ESPN. It was on ESPN, and the primary ESPN audience, the people who don't like video games, were super pissed about it. It was like this big thing, and everybody was like going to their Twitter and mm. being super pissed, and they're being super ridiculous and assholes about the whole thing. And I think it's insanely cool that they. Uh, you know, we're on ESPN. We're going to get to a point to where those people won't like exist in terms of this, where it is be- going to become more and more of like common nature, or um, I guess just the frequency of it and finding a way to attach to it, to where it will not be a problem. Anymore. Where I guess the the best way I can put it is, it will be taken more seriously than it is now. Now, does it need to be taken more seriously? I don't know. That's that's what you're here for is to provide opinions on those things. I just think it's fascinating that. It- <clears throat> You know, is growing to the point to where to where you don't have to worry about those types of tweets anymore. Mm. Moving, you know, into the future. All right, let's hit some comments here real quick. Absolutely. So, uh, so with Zod's here. The last one was about booing Festus for being a Texans fan. <laughs> uh, the Overwatch uh, League charges an insane amount of money for a team to be team. So I guess like to, in order to form one, you have to like pay a large entry cost. You can t- you can't take a much smaller pool of talent than filter with a massive cost of entry. <clears throat> uh, 
the one great thing about esports is that some kid from the Ukraine can play in a LAN cafe for years and make millions a year from that dedication and skill level. That's true. Uh, the player intros are ultra cringeworthy. Yep. Uh, Darth Axe says, I think we should both, uh, we should, uh, have both, like, the Olympics, have, uh, custom teams of people from all over, and then once a year we have the uh, country or community teams. I think that's fair, I guess. Uh, the smaller tournaments of people casting from a couple of couches and playing in a small hot ass room in California are the best. Uh, as long as my home team doesn't have any ethnic folk on it, I'm fine with the esports segregation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, geographical elements exist in esports, though, without the ridiculous structure of Overwatch. Yeah, it's kind of already a thing where it's like you have you know, the, the the Koreans versus the American team. Yeah. Um, but the thing is, like now they're just owned by someone else. You know what I mean? That's like the big difference. Uh, Dota tournaments always end with Chinese team versus U.S. or European teams. Uh, Adafi's saying yeah, he's going to go watch Highly Art. She has boobs and isn't talking about gay esports. And, uh, yeah, the generational disconnect, I guess we could call it. Uh, <clears throat> I know a lot of pro players quit because of the structure. Uh, are you talking about the current structure or the one that uh, is being proposed, like, that are, you know, going towards? But, yeah, I mean, while we, while we, I guess, get an answer on that, like, I don't know. It's just... Yeah, I think, uh, I think Zod's a lot closer to this. Well, yeah, he, he, he's very much, like, involved in, like... As far as like actually participating and yeah, watching, this is stuff that he that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, okay, then I guess the current structure. A lot of people are uh, just the cost of entry to become an official team. Fucking killed a lot of the pro ones. Yeah, that sucks. <clears throat> well, I mean, there no. will probably be there will probably be fucking non-official tournaments. Zyda, hopefully. I appreciate your input on this because I don't think like you and I are big no, into we don't esports. <laughs> I don't know jack well, shit really. Clearly, as we haven't talked about it a lot, but I think that that's uh, definitely a lot of valid input. And uh, important facts that people need to know about when looking into something like this. So. Yeah. Oh, you know, I think I see his point a little bit better as far as, like, the random kid from Ukraine in the land cafe, right? Yeah. Can make he can't, he can't buy in. Not anymore. It. Yeah, he can no longer afford to. Yeah. So, yeah, like I said, I don't... That's heartbreaking. Like I said, I just don't think, like, modeling this after sports, like, because the more I think about it, it's more like, what's the difference besides now... These teams are just owned by the companies and can basically milk them dry for money. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? No, don't get me wrong. Like, uh, once anything, once capitalism rears its ugly head. <laughs> well, you're seeing it right now. I mean, like, <laughs> uh, then things can be, can and will be affected by the things in a neg uh, negative way. So stop killing his nerd's ass. This nerd's ass. Oh. We can do whatever ass we want to, man. Yeah. But yeah, uh, so super, super fascinating. I'm really interested about this. When was this like? Was this, was this just like announced like today or? Uh, this was in the last week. I last would say week. Monday or Tuesday. It's been in the last. So, if I had to pick which ones from the Ukraine, I'm gonna bet it's that. <laughs> he won the international two or three and won millions. Well, hopefully with those millions. Mm. Well, he yeah, can that's the thing. Like, them the East, current, the current like league. non like privatized or whatever fucking. Uh, you know, esports leagues that exist in, in the tournaments, like, already, like, they give millions out. Like, yeah. you don't need, you, like, and I don't see really any benefit to this, like, to the actual team people. Because I don't think they're going to be paid as much as sports people. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, I don't know. Rudy says, y'all want to meet at Torchy Saturday. Let's go. Let's do it, man. But, all right. <clears throat> uh, we good to move on, you think? Current TI7 pool is already 21 million. What fuck's TI7? No idea. But all right, ready? Yeah, let's move on. Let's talk about Chivos. Actually, all that Valve hat money. Um, what do you what do you think about skipping this topic till next week? Because we've only got fifteen minutes left, and we have another topic. I want to talk about. I'm fine with that. You cool with that? Yeah. So gather your thoughts on it. Everybody, gather your thoughts on achievements and things like that. That's something most, I think we could go on for a while. The most killable looking man I've ever seen in my entire Dude, life. I fucking love Lost so much. <laughs> I do. It's such a good show. Mm -hmm. That's hilarious, but I love Lost. All right. So, yeah, this is, this is kind of... Yeah, to me, this is more uh, topical. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And especially, it's more important to get out while the SNES Classic is still kind of relevant in our minds right. in terms of its existence. Um, okay, the N64 Classic. I immediately, when the SNES Classic started, uh, was announced, like, oh, shit, they're going to do N64 next. And as I've thought about it, the N64 Classic seems very, very hard to pull off. So, the first thing that anybody is going to think about when they think about the N64 Classic is the library. So, let's talk about the potential library. 
So, and I don't mean, and I don't mean, let's list off every game that it could be. No, but there but, are a lot less genuine a have aged well classics. Even beyond that is a like an extremely fair point. But even beyond that, there are. So let's. I'll just go out right and say it like. A lot of the in- incredibly good games that you would want to play on Nintendo 64, Mario Kart, Mario Party, mm. Smash Brothers, things that you're like, oh, this has got to be on there. Those are four-player games. So, in order to like enjoy those games at the fullest extent, you have to have four controllers, just like you did when you were a kid. So, the N64 Classic is either going to have to come with four N64 controllers... Or it's going to have to make N64 controllers yep. readily available. Now, yes, they could do those things. There's a, that's the thing. It's like, realistically, they could do all this. It's, I'm not saying that it won't happen. I'm saying that it probably mm. won't, based on mm. all these factors I'm about to go into. Um, the controllers. So, when you're talking about building an NES or an SNES controller, not much to it. In terms of the button placement and like what type of components you need to build these controllers. But when you get to N64, you start getting into little things like joysticks and uh that's when like rumble features were initiated and you think about something like star fox 64 that had rumble so are they going to Im- include rumble stuff <clears throat> is it going to have like is it going to have a rumble pack accessory that you buy it's all just going to come with mad cats controllers <laughs> <laughs> i mean <laughs> yes that is an option um the actual joysticks themselves they would have to like remanufacture those uh, the, for the most part the stuff that makes up an NES and SNES controller. Yes, you have to, like, design the plastic buttons and all those kind of things. Mm. But redesigning the joysticks and the way that those joysticks work is, you know, getting all that little powder dust all over the place. Um, It's a little bit more complex. And you have to be able to design four of those in the hopes, or you're just not going to have those games. You're just not going to have multiplayer, four-player multiplayer games. But that was kind of the N64. One of its big um, selling points was Excuse me, four-player multiplayer. So, you know, I, the big things like Smash, Mario Kart, Mario Party, those things are just not going to work unless they find some sort of alternative method for getting that many controllers in the box and in your hands and all that kind of stuff. It just it seems like a significantly more challenging thing to pull off. Uh, in addition, <clears throat> next, um, so many of the amazing Nintendo IP were, or games were developed by Rare. And Rare was a big, big, big supporter of Nintendo in a great way, but they're now owned by uh, Microsoft. Right, but we I mean we got Donkey Kong Country on the sw- on the uh, SNES, so I mean that was owned by Rare as well. Yeah, but that has that has Nintendo characters in it. So Diddy Kong Racing, Donkey Kong sixty four. Oh, no, yes, you'll get those. But Banjo Kazooie, yeah. Banjo Tooie, Conquer, all that's now owned by Microsoft. So like when Diddy Kong Racing was re released on the DS in the mid two thousands, <laughs> sure, it did not have Banjo or Conquer. In it. They yeah, took them out and it, added it's, other characters. That's got to be fucking impossible. So yeah, you to no conquer this with no rare games on it. Yeah, so right. it'll be Goldeneye. That'd be Perfect Dark. Yeah, that Jet Force Gemini. Yeah. all of that stuff. An incredible Blast Core, Killer Instinct. That stuff. Unless Nintendo and Microsoft work out some sort of licensing deal, which, which Nintendo's, they could. Nintendo's not going to want. To the, fucking they split. absolutely They're could not do. Want to split costs with Microsoft? And that's what I'm saying. Like, there with all these things, it's like yeah, they could find ways around that, but. Once you, like, start stacking all of this stuff up together, you're like, holy shit, this is kind of a challenging thing to pull off. So, in addition, uh, like, Goldeneye. Goldeneye is a very, very hard game to, like, get remade. Because you have Nintendo, you have Rare, and you have Activision involved. Because Activision currently owns the rights to uh, the James Bond IP in terms of video games. So, you have to get all three of those people on board to get Goldeneye. Which, not having Goldeneye is not a huge deal. But I guarantee you, it will be to a lot. It's of like whenever people. the SNES Classic got announced, and everybody's like, "Where the fuck's Chrono Trigger?" Yeah. Imagine Goldeneye not being on the N64 Classic. <laughs> like that is a uh, well, dude. That's that's worse though. Yeah, like, Goldeneye is like that is like right up there with Super Mario 64 as far as like recognizable shit you remember playing on uh, N64. Yeah, uh, Idafi has a pretty good point, which is that uh, Microsoft and Nintendo have become decently more friendly as far as uh, you know Minecraft uh, for sure, know, Minecraft, and then. You know, switch on uh, on E3 on the Microsoft E3 presentation being mentioned. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, they like. I, I don't think it's impossible. No, I don't it's... think any of this is impossible, but I think it probably won't happen. 
I think it is more likely that it won't happen than likely that it will. Or it's going to be an extremely limited number of games on it. You're going to get Mario 64. Wait, which at that point, like, why, why would you want Why it? would you even do it? Yeah. Yeah. If, <clears throat> if, you, or if you're not going to have the four, four controllers, like, like I said, I think that's a huge factor. Uh, in addition, like I said, the hardware stuff. So uh, Rumble Packs. What about something like um, uh, Pokemon Stadium or uh, Pokemon Snap? All of these things had, like, accessories associated. Well, or a like, Hey I, Pikachu. I mean, no, but, but, but I'm not saying these are requirements. These are like, Nintendo that's like IP. A, that's like if there was a Dream Class cast classic, and they fucking put Seaman on there, and it's like, oh, you know, you don't have the you don't have the microphone, think, you're fucked. Like, yeah, but imagine imagine the existence of a Nintendo console after Pokemon's existence, and it not having Pokemon games. Like, Pokemon is always to, to me insanely important to Nintendo, the especially ones, yeah. More yeah. so, yeah. I would, say, so I would definitely say that, that more about. so. I would definitely say more so. I think we're more likely to get a a, a Game Boy uh, Color classic, yeah, than we are to get an N sixty four classic. Um, but yeah, so there are there are a lot of like little restrictions, and you know there are some even like the uh, the RAM, the memory RAM. Yeah, now, granted, you could work around that. You could still emulate Majora's Mask, and you could still emulate Donkey Kong sixty four to where you don't need that type of thing. But there are all these little uh, hardware technicalities and um, I mean, they would have license to go back technicalities and, actually, yeah. and uh, accessory technicalities that make the N64 Classic significantly more challenging to accomplish than an NES or SNES Classic. Right. Uh, Darth X says, I wish they would take, it, would, it would take cartridges so you can play the ones uh, they can't put inside it. Yeah. Well, I mean, at that point, you're better off just buying a fucking old one. Uh, right. Taylor says Raspberry Pi is a smarter buy at this point. Yeah. I mean, that's it's smarter buy. Uh, yes, that's it's that's been the case basically since Forever. Yeah. before NES class NES class was even revealed. Uh, as far as if you're just wanting like playability. Now, if if you're wanting like you know if, if you're looking at it from like a collector standpoint, I mean that's a little bit different. That's where sure. that would be the only reason why I would want one. To be like, Me too. <clears throat> I mean, I have the NES Classic. Yeah, I, I have an play, NES Classic. I'm gonna I have play an NES Classic. Games, I'm just gonna emulate them. I'm not taking it out of the box. It's for, you know, it's for a collection, but, <clears throat> yeah, uh, if, if you're wanting just straight functionality, Raspberry Pi is most certainly the way to go. Absolutely. I think, I think you, said, you said it correctly where you said it's a smarter buy. Definitely yeah. a smarter buy. <clears throat> we have not done a 64-game wish list yet. I don't know. Are we going to do that? Uh, I mean, t that's where this topic started in my head. <laughs> like, that's because that's, I was like, hey, we need to do a <clears throat> N64 classic. Yeah. Um, like like list of games that we want, and then I started thinking about licensing issues, and then I started thinking about controller issues, and then hardware issues. And I'm like, eh, <clears throat> let's change the topic to why I think that it probably won't happen. Right. Um, Taylor said, can they even put Goldeneye on the N64 Classic without licensing issues? Uh, licensing challenges? I mean, there are, there will be issues to a certain extent. It is not uh, impossible. I think the answer is no. I don't think they can just put it on there scot free. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Microsoft is going to have to take a little Microsoft or, and and Activision. Yep, everybody's going to have to take a little bit, um, a little bit off the top for in order for it to make it work. So uh, we're talking a very expensive device that is that they are going to have to manufacture a fuck ton of controllers for and have to work uh, work their asses off to make all the licensing deals work. And I don't know if that's worth it for something that they are going to sell for maybe a hundred and twenty bucks and only have for hundred twenty three million. Of, you know, I ain't being generous. Well, yeah, because they sold 1.2 million NES classics. Nintendo so. would be the sort of company that would put out less, con less, you know, less controllers than consoles for a four-player console. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, I don't actually. I, I really do not see it as a good move for now. That you put it like now, all it's considered, and like I already kind of knew probably which direction you're going in. But yeah, I mean, pretty airtight. Yeah, I don't think I don't think it's gonna happen. I don't. Now, still what, now, hold on, though, hold on, could. though. What they could do, right? You follow me? I'm following you. just you. put out the fucking virtual console already and just put them on there. <laughs> what a novel concept. I'm definitely following Would you, you fucking believe it? That sounds way better to me. Uh, scroll up and hit a couple more comments, and then if it, you guys don't have anything else, we'll uh, wrap this that up. That was saying, uh, he, was enjoy he was thinking about uh, you know, enjoying the 64 wish list like we did with the previous two, but uh, at this discussion, it might be just kind of more of a bummer. Yeah, this whole conversation is <laughs> a little sad. Yeah, Rudy's is wanting more celebrity guests, uh, even one of the shitty bald ones. I'll settle do. for a bald Dude, I'd love to have a bald one on here. <laughs> Tenth generation bald one. <laughs> Ooh. Who's crossbed with his sister. His name is Festus, or Fetus. And we got his paperwork and everything. Yep. But, uh, yeah, man. I don't know, we'll see. I fucking doubt it. Yeah, not gonna happen.
But I suppose that is it. Uh, that is it for us tonight. Uh, one more thing before we get to all yeah, the plugs. Uh, this Monday we'll be doing a 24-hour stream, a goodbye stream for Jay Digdug. She's moving to Colorado. Um, she's going to start up her own thing, so we're going to have a lot more details around that, so you guys can support her and follow her uh, future ventures. Uh, but we're going to do one final 24-hour stream with Jay Diggs. She's going to do some stuff with me, some stuff with you, stuff with VKP, all of us together. Um, yeah, we're going to do some fun stuff. So um, if you're in the Facebook group, which is facebook.com slash group slash the Chainsaw Ape group, it's also yes. listed right here, here. I don't know where I'm going. It's up here somewhere. Let's somewhere just move on. <laughs> um, you can go there, join the group. The schedule for the 24-hour stream is posted there. Who's going to be playing what games we're going to be playing all that it's on a monday which is kind of an inconvenient time because i know a lot of you guys work but it's a good thing to put on while you're working and you can catch the you know the overnight stuff in the archive yeah jd pizza party um so yeah make sure you guys check out chainsight.com that's a place that aggregates all of our content all of our links to everything uh, there's a store there there are cool stuff that you can print out and cut out little eight face masks um check out our youtube channel subscribe we put all of these episodes of Preparation Ape up. Uh, there's also some cool stuff that DKP uh, did in his younger years that I'm, I'm, I'm a huge fan of, so uh, check some of that stuff yeah, out. Lots of nudes, too. Lots of nudes. Um, of course, the Facebook group I mentioned earlier. Follow us on Twitter. And then, of course, if you like Chainsaw Ape enough to buy some clothing, if you want a Chainsaw Ape Jesus hat. Christ, we're going fucking all in with the plugs this time, huh? If you want a shower curtain, if you want to get yourself a shower curtain with the apes, if you're sad enough to buy a, a fucking footy pajama, where, if you, we're there, we're if there, you want we're some there pink, to sell it to you. pink footy pajamas, uh, you can get those at cafepress.com slash ape shop. All right, I'm done with the plugs. All right. I mean, I guess they're necessary. But... <clears throat> All right. Not always. Sometimes. All right. So about if I... Wait. I have a question. Oh, boy. Waiting with bated breath here. Oh, yeah. Uh, if this is your first time joining us or you're watching somewhere else it's on the channel, it's all about Corey in the house. Yeah, we do love Corey in the house. That's what it's all about. Where it started and that's where it will end. Yep. I'm Major Tom. Uh, what game would you like released that would end the chapter in your life? Well, we, already, we already talked about this in the what Facebook What game room. would you like released that would end the chapter? Like, which one would, would release that would you just be like, alright, that's out. I never thought it would happen. I could die happy. Half-Life 3. Just fucking, I want to stop hearing about it. I want to stop fucking not knowing what happened. The whole thing, all the discussions, the memes. Release it, even if it sucks. Book closed, that's it. We can move on. That'll be mine. Or finish Metal Gear Solid, Metal Gear Solid 5. 5. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, I don't actually know. I'd have to think about it. I'm sure there's something deep in there. Well, no time to pontificate. Yeah. yeah. We'll, get, we'll get back to you on that one. How about that? How would Gabe Noel troll people then? Uh, I'm sure he'll fucking find a way. His existence. Well, oh, you still have left for Dead 3. He would find a fucking way. Uh, normally we do a post stream where we play a game. Lately it's been Final Fantasy 7. We're not doing that tonight. We're going to, in ape fashion, go see War for the Planet of the Apes. <clears throat> yep. <coughs> God damn, sorry about that. Yeah, no. <laughs> he would go, oh, you guys thought it was a trilogy? No. It's an octology. An octology. There's, there's, there's going to be five more at least. All episodically released. And then, yeah, we'll die before it ends. But alright, guys. Well, I'm DKP. I'm Major Tom. And, uh, let's see. I'll see you guys on Monday. Oh, on yeah, no stream tomorrow night? No stream tomorrow, because uh, Julie's going away party thing. Yep. Uh, so, yes. So I'll see you Sunday for something. I don't know what yet. Alright, I'll see you guys on Monday. Alright, guys, take it easy. Have a good weekend. Be safe, etc., etc. And see you next time. Bye. Later, fellas.